Now this triangle right here is gonna help you tremendously when you are in front of pediatric patients. And there is one, two, three different parts we're gonna go over this video so you can get better when you have a sick child in front of you and you are their EMT or you are their paramedic. Now our first part, I'm gonna write it out here, it's going to be the appearance, the appearance of the child. So when you first walk in the room, what do you see? What is the activity of the child, right? What is the muscle tone of the child, right? So I'm gonna break this down for you on appearance, but appearance is the first step. Now with the appearance, that's our first part of the triangle. It's when we walk in the room, things we look for. I have a mnemonic for you, but there's three main parts of the appearance section. First is the activity of the child. So we look at the child or the infant, and we're looking to see what the activity is like when we first walk on scene. Are they motionless? Are they interacting with others around them? Some things to look for. Tone, what is the muscle tone? Strong, is it more limp? What is the muscle tone of the child? And then three is, what is the cry or the verbal response when you start to approach and talk to the child or the infant? You'll notice a lot of these also have to do with an infant or even a newborn that cannot speak with you about all the complaints, right? So that's why we have the mnemonics. So tickles, T-I-C-L-S, the tickles mnemonic is how we evaluate appearance. Now, how we assess appearance is via the tickles mnemonic, T-I-C-L-S, tickles. So T is tone, again, what's that muscle tone? I, interactiveness. Now C, consolability, the patient's normal caregivers. Is the patient consolable or are they just outrageous, right? That's what we're looking for in consolability. L, what is the look? What is the gaze of the patient, right? One pro I wanna give you, and I'll go speech or cries last. Now one pro I wanna give you with pediatrics is this. A sick child doesn't care if you're there. Now what does that mean? You're a stranger walking into their life, into their home. They should be tracking you and all your movements like crazy. If they're not tracking you and watching you, and they're just totally, they don't care at all, they're letting you do whatever exams they want. That is a sinister sign in young children. And that's part of our appearance. Now our second part of this is work of breathing. So now we're gonna go through a list, a little checklist, if you will, of how we're gonna assess this child's breathing. Now with work of breathing, it's our second part of our triangle. We look at what is the child's position. So obviously the tripod position is a position, or even if we're in a really extended sniffing position, we're trying to get in, we're really trying to gain more air, right? The tripod position is you're structuring the body in a way to allow the, as much air as possible in. That's a sign of distress, right? So my second part is, are there any signs of distress? You know, a child sitting on the couch awaiting your arrival versus a child in the tripod position who is nasal flaring, retractions in between the ribs, pulling in between the ribs, accessory muscle use, pulling on muscles in the chest and the neck that aren't really normal, and increased respiratory rate going up. That's signs of respiratory distress, right? Those are some of the first signs that we gotta act on this patient. So we can see that by looking at the child and exposing the patient, right? Respiratory failure is much worse. The respiratory rate starts to slow. We get slow, sluggish respirations, weak body positioning. Again, that, that, that feeling of, I don't even care that you're here, I'm just so, I'm done, right? Cyanosis, right? Blueing of the lips and the nails and the skin, right? And the last part is our lung sound. Well, first off, a grunt. If I hear grunting or strider, 
or even wheezing sometimes. I might be able to hear that from across the room, right? Listening to lung sounds, obviously, you're gonna hear wheezing a lot better, but strider, grunting, you can sometimes hear that across the room. So when you're first walking up, any audible sounds, then obviously just do a quick listen of the lungs. What do you hear back on that? Any odd lung sound. Okay, we've made it to the final stage, which is gonna be the circulation step. Let's get into it. Now our last stage here of the pediatric assessment triangle or PAT, you're never gonna forget is circulation. Circulation is very simple. It comes down to two main things, bleeding and skin condition, and really exposing the patient and evaluating that skin condition. Now again, from looking across the room, I can see, well, is there flushing in the skin? Do I see hives? And do I see the main three? Do I see any pale skin? Do I see an irregular coloring of the skin, mild skin? Do I see cyanosis, which is blue gray skin? Do I see that? So external bleeding, skin condition. Okay, of course, you can check a quick cap refill in the patient. Is there a flushing of the face? And I throw in a bonus here for you. Check for hives. Obviously, it's one of the first signs of an allergic reaction, so you wanna check for that as well. By clicking in the first link in the description, you get lifetime access to my Video Vault program. The Video Vault includes over 480 videos of content and now holds over 2,000 National Registry Practice Test questions. Also includes some really awesome bonuses like worksheets, drug cards that are pre-filled out all for you, community group access to ask me questions, and audio files when you are on the go. The Video Vault will find you no matter where you're at, whether you're an EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic student, and my students use this, whether you are getting ready for school, in school right now, or getting ready to go pass your national registry exams. So click the first link in the description right now and get yourself lifetime access to the Video Vault today. I'll see you there.